Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, I'm going to do this one real short. Now, I was listening to this video. I, I really was. I was listening to this video while I was doing some work in the background. And this shows you 10 minutes, 59 seconds. See, I told you, my people, let me show you one of my people, okay? Let me show you. Uh, not that right there. That's not one of my people. That that that's that idiot. Y'all don't want, don't don't pay him no mind. My one of my people is this right here. Thanks for all you do. Okay, and you're absolutely right. I listen to you while I do all kinds of things. Your knowledge and the music is very much appreciated. So let me tell y'all something. Thank you, young young lady. Thank you. Okay, let me let me let me show y'all something. I'm sitting up here listening to this. And I get to this point right here. I also have to hold on. A bunch of the emails to people. You you be quiet. Oh, the emails are done. The emails are done. I did it tonight. Gonna to talk about that delegation, y'all. Songs of all time. Mm-hmm. Just the way. Just want y'all to know I'm sitting up here listening to this. Let me show y'all. And what I mean by the moment I turned up that music right there, let me tell y'all something. The moment we get to, not this part right here, y'all. Not not that part right there. See, the problem is. They don't make no, 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 no. Like this no more. Yeah, hold on. Come on, guys. Right here. That part right there. My head was bobbing and weaving. I'm sitting up there listening, and my man, I'm telling you, I get it. I get the reason why this man does his videos this way. Because I guarantee you, if I wasn't enjoying listening to this, and when this song came on, I enjoyed it even more. I enjoyed it so much that I had to do this video. Hey, Eon, be quiet. I'm talking. I said, be quiet. Ladies and gentlemen, see, my people understand the same as I just understood while watching one of my own videos. Well, not even watching it. I was listening to it while I'm doing other work in the background. While listening to one of my own videos, this song came on and I paused and my head is bobbing and I catch myself getting into the song and listening to what I'm saying at the same time. That's what I mean by the next time I hear the delegation and, oh, honey, this is the conversation I'm going to remember. Why? Because it's a teaching technique, people. As one of Jehovah's Witnesses, I went to something known as the Theocratic Ministry School. Okay? Now it's referred to as our kingdom ministry and a couple of other things, and we have our uh, school workbook and so forth. But during the week, people think it's a ritual. They think it's a religion. It is not a religion. The Kingdom Hall is where you go to learn. Seriously, and I'm not joking. And if you've ever met a Jehovah's Witness, ask them if the Kingdom Hall is not a meeting place to learning about something. Well, they teach you how to be speakers. They teach you how to give talks. I told this to one person, and they didn't understand it. They didn't See, they didn't understand that there is something called, well, it, it's no longer, it's, uh, you have a different teach book now, but it was the Theocratic Ministry School guidebook at the time when I was growing up. And I went over that book because I had to give talks and you get a lesson that you have to work on. And it's about maybe seven paragraphs you have to go over and it teaches you techniques for giving talks and the highlight and gestures and things like that. And so I went over that as a child, as when I started giving talks, I was a, uh, probably seven or eight when I first gave my first talk. But when I my father died, I started giving talks on a regular basis. And there was nobody there to really teach me, teach me. And I always wanted to give talks where, pay attention, everyone, where people paid attention to what I was saying, where they didn't fall asleep with the information and then they were able to pick up the key points. That's what I always wanted to do. It's okay. I don't need anyone's approval because others have already told me that that's exactly what they gather. That they remember this. They remembered me saying this. I talked with one person. We can, we can say her name, Miss Lady Sunshine. She's constantly telling me, no, but you said it. And then, then you said this. And she's constantly reminding me of what I said in different videos because she pays attention. I am not a God. I'm not a king. I'm not a lord. I'm not anything. I'm just a man. But I have to understand one thing, the same as many of you recognize, that I have knowledge of things that other people don't have. I don't take it for granted. If I took it for granted, I'd be keeping it to myself. 
ladies and gentlemen, do you not understand? I'm not like the other ones. I'm not trying to pimp you. I'm not trying to, well, no, I'll only give you this knowledge if you pay me. That's not me. Knowledge should be free. So some people have been trying to take my words and use them against me. Well, you said knowledge should be free, so you should be doing the consult for free. No. <laughs> oh, God, no. Well, first of all, most of the people who call me, they get information without me charging them a dime because I give them information. Go ahead. Well, you can't talk to Well, eventually, I think probably about two weeks when I get settled in, I'm going to start doing interviews over the telephone, recording them, and then doing putting it up on video so that you guys can hear what other people have experienced, what other people have been doing, so that you can hear that when people call me, I answer my phone. Some people, I'm surprised you answered. Why are you surprised? Why would I not answer my phone? It's my phone. I got it for when it rings, I can answer it. I didn't get a phone so I could look at it. I have a lot of paperweights, but that's not one of them. That's what I'm trying to say, folks. That's that's all this is about. Is in a nutshell, all I'm doing is trying. But I do know for a fact when this fool is talking, that's a shame. Because let's think about it. If this song came out today and you never heard anything like it. Everybody and their grandmama would be playing it. Why? Because, ladies and gentlemen, tell me I'm wrong. Harmony. Tell me I'm wrong that that particular song right there, just and I say that particular one, but there are many other songs that if they came out today, people wouldn't think of it as being out of place. Because music transcends time. Don't you don't believe me? Okay, there was a song that wasn't even meant to be placed on the radio. And yet, it's the number one song of all times. Do you know what it was? I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. You know the song? Just like the one I used to know. Okay. He wasn't even supposed to be producing that song that year. It wasn't supposed to be for that project. But Bing Crosby did the song, number one song of all time. And they still play it to this day. It's played in movies. It's played all over the place. To this very day, that song still plays. The number one song. Look at that. One song. And it transcends time. Now, mind you, I don't play that song because I don't dream of white Christmases. Anyway, no, all of my Christmases are black. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. As I'm saying, music transcends time. No matter what race you are, you know that song. I don't care if you're Hispanic. Don't do the Mexican thing. I don't like that word. And I know a lot of people that I'm familiar with don't like the word Mexican, even though it's the country the person is from. But because the country has received such a bad name from the United States, people don't like the word Mexican. So I use the phrase Latin or Hispanic, like most of the people that I know. Or the people from Britain. Now, see, what do you call a, a British person? British, right? You say British? Okay. All of these different groups, all of these different people, doesn't matter. Go go any place in the world and play that song and see if they've not heard it. Just trust me. <laughs> that one song, it transcends. Why? Because music is the most how would you say, elementary and most basic form of communication that we have as humans. Music communicates so much. Look, I'm going to do one more time. Just listen and in the background. Vocals, you know, it's a nice song. Now, some of you may not like it, and that's okay. Everybody has their right to their own taste, you know. I, I like certain foods, and I don't like... Now, again... When it comes to music, there are those out there who appreciate it. There are those out there who critique it. And then there are those out there who just listen to it and take it for what it is. They don't like it. They don't dislike it. Hey, it's music. And they let it play. So to tell the mark of a true intellectual, a lot of people who have skills and knowledge and understanding and they 
they pride themselves on their so-called education. They can't handle distractions. When they're studying, when they're doing something, they cannot be distracted. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't see the room that I'm in. For the past week, I've had two computers on in front of me and I've been going between both computers and I'm not sharing screens. So both computers are operating independently of each other, but they all have all of these windows open as far as, um, what do you call it, uh, links. All of these links are open, different links on each computer. They're all full. As you see, each time you watch, that's all full. 17 to 30 in each one. It's Trust me, it's not that I'm doing research. It's the fact that if I'm looking for something, I go from that to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next. Okay, and most of the time I'll leave it up because I'll go back to it. I am not multitasking. People call it multitasking. This is not multitasking. This is the way my mind works. These are the amount of things I'm thinking about on a small level all the time. That's why I told you, hold on so that you can see it better because I, I know other people like certain foods. That I, I, didn't, I didn't know he was going to start talking. Like. Uh-oh, Ring okay. Central. I forgot all about you. I'm going to have to take care of y'all tomorrow. Peanut That's Ring Central, y'all. Anyway, Peanut butter, butter and jelly. I, I got to get me some peanut butter and jelly. Music. You see this right here? The reason why I like it so much. Wait, I don't like music. Be quiet. I ain't talking to you. Oh, that's right. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I talked about DMX and him passing away yesterday. Um, I'm sorry. I don't care what DMX died of. What I do care about is the fact that somebody died. Does that make sense to anyone? I don't care why they died anymore. Sorry, too many people have died in the last year that it's, it's pathetic. And here's the problem. Nobody cares that they died. I was just thinking about um, John Witherspoon. And you know who he is. He played Grant Paul on uh, the Boondocks. He also played the father on what's that? The Wayne's Brothers. And then he <laughs> he played in Friday. And they were talking about doing another Friday. And here he is. He he's not not here anymore. That man played in so many different shows that pretty much they're gonna have to work around his character. And he, he was funny, okay? I got to admit, I didn't, you know, he curses and all that stuff, but it's okay. And I'm not saying it's okay to curse. Don't don't get me wrong. What I'm saying is he was funny. You can't take away from that. He was funny. And there was a lot of appreciation. Many people may not have liked DMX. DMX cursed too. But you know the problem is? DMX brought in a style of rap that had not been seen before which is why it was his niche, and that's why he took control the way he did. Got to give him his credit. Then we've lost a lot of actors, a lot of singers. Man, look, we, the, don't take my word for it, just go back and look at last year. R&B took a huge hit. Now, mind you, a lot of people don't listen to R&B, especially that new junk, and you heard me say it right, I said junk. But pay attention, ladies and gentlemen. Without R&B, music would never be the same. You don't believe me? Well, look at all the rock songs that come from R&B singers. That's, I, I don't need to go on and on and on and on and on about that. Uh, just like somebody, I was riding in an Uber the other day. Are you riding an Uber? That's right. I was riding an Uber because I couldn't walk anymore. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I've been in a wheelchair for two years. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't want to be sitting in a wheelchair for two years. I was in a wheelchair for two years. For two years. And so now I'm having to make myself walk again. That is not easy. There's a lot of pain associated with that, but I make myself walk. The only problem is I made myself walk one day and I did over two miles. And by the time I got back, my legs were so swollen that I looked and I literally said, that ain't, no, I'm not going to do that to myself again. It's, it was too much. But I'm getting back there to where I need to be. This is what the system did. 
a lot of damage with that trip that I just took. That's why I say I can't do it again, because if I did it again, it would be way too much. I would not be able to handle that. I would not survive that. So that's why that's my last time. Ladies and gentlemen, there's only been one other person that I am aware of that went in to correct things into the system intentionally. See, like I said, I knew they were coming my way. And so as you go back and listen to the videos, I told you what I was going to do once it happened, that I was going to test things out like I did in PR. I knew they were coming my way. So while I'm in there, until I get released, and I always knew it wasn't going to be long because I knew in advance that it was going to happen, then I would test the system out. As I told you before, why do you think I put the hour style money orders in my case? Go ahead, look it up. It is 13, was it 13 or is it 12? No, the case started 13, even though the arrest was uh, 12. Uh, 13 CR 00058, Puerto Rico Federal District Court. Go ahead and look at the case. And if you can pull the documents, look at the money orders that were placed on the record. I placed them on the record on purpose, ladies and gentlemen. I told you my job is to test the system. That case, I don't believe is sealed yet. <laughs> they sealed all my other cases, <laughs> except for the current one and that one. They haven't sealed them, but all the other cases they've sealed. Ladies and gentlemen, go ahead and pull the money orders. You'll see they're all over the case. Yeah, that's right. What, I, what was I doing the money orders for? Because many of you were being arrested or threatened with arrest saying that those money orders were illegal. There were some people posting underneath my videos that the money orders were illegal. So I did that to prove they weren't illegal. That's why I put them into a federal so-called court case so that everybody and their grandfather could see they were not illegal. If they were illegal, as one of Jehovah's Witnesses, I would be the biggest hypocrite on this planet, claiming to be a servant of God and then violating the law intentionally no 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 Jehovah's witnesses don't do that people that's what i've been trying to tell you that's not how we operate yeah 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 i know not every jehovah's witness act like me they don't say things and come close to saying things and talk about cows and garden tools and all that stuff let me let you know there are a lot of things that people do that i don't do and a lot of things i do that others don't do but I tell you one thing, I do not intentionally violate the law that my God provides. You will not find that. I'm not here to be liked. I'm here to be appreciated, but I am not here to be liked. These videos are not for you to become my friend. These videos are not for you to like me. These videos are not for you to like them or hate them or anything. That's not why they're done. I'm just talking. If you can gather something from what I'm saying, and if it benefits you, then I have done my job because that's the purpose of the video. That's all it is. It's nothing more, nothing less. You know what I have? When I say my people, because with the comment I left for that person, I said, no, that's what I mean, my people. My people understand. Now, I'm not saying my people like, Jesus said, I have other sheep who are not of this fold. My sheep listen to my voice. No, I'm not saying that. When I say my people, I'm talking about my people are the ones who ignore all the antics. My people are the ones who ignore all of the distractions. My people are the ones who have come to understand how to focus. There are a lot of you older cats, folks, who can't handle it. And I'm going to tell you, that's too bad, because I had a friend, his last name was Cater. But I'm sorry, I don't cater. That's not what these videos are for. I'm not here to accommodate you. I'm not doing this for you. I'm doing this for my people. My people are willing to, you know what, that's a distraction. But I'm going to pay attention. For instance, see these cars going in the background? All of them are a distraction. But you know, when I'm sitting here looking at it, let me tell you what I'm focusing on. I'm focusing on this and that truck that's down there and these things right here. You see that? During the daytime, these are lights, <laughs> okay? During the daytime and they're brightest there. That's what I'm focusing on. 
because whoever put this together, that's what they focused on. See, all of these is just routine. They're just the same old repeating algorithm, but they wanted to make it different. And then there, I focus on this right here and the people walking here. Okay, you see them jump? Okay, that's the type of stuff I'm focusing on. The small stuff that nobody else would really pay attention to because it's not meant for them to pay attention to. That's how I look at the law. What is it in this law that they're trying not to tell me? They're trying not to say something. What is it they're trying not to say? When I'm looking at a court case, what are they trying to hide? Wait, they're doing a distraction. What's this distraction all about? Why are they trying to distract me? That's what I'm saying to myself. When I am looking at court cases, when I'm listening to judges, what is your angle? That's why when people tell me about their case, I can tell them exactly what they're trying to and trying not to do. It's all right there. Now, ladies and gentlemen, over the next couple of weeks, I will be telling you about the lawsuit where I'm putting a court case into a lawsuit, where I'm suing the case. Well, you can't sue a case. You can only sue a person, please. If you can sue a corporation, you can sue a case. Oh, that's right. That's right. And I'll be doing that. Now, if they play games and say it's a um, baseless argument, it's without merit, please. You guys have brought a case against me. You filed this in the courtroom. This is evidence of a debt. You say I can't challenge that debt, and I'm saying that that constitutional amendment is bull. <coughs> excuse, <coughs> excuse me. Um, anyway, and I'm saying, no, I'm doing this so I can go to bankruptcy court. Completely different jurisdiction. Everybody thinks bankruptcy court is federal jurisdiction. Bankruptcy court is not the district court. Those are not Article Three judges. Bankruptcy court is completely different. Bankruptcy court is a legislative court, people. Pay attention. Most people don't know that. They're not a judicial court. Bankruptcy court, even though they're in the district court, they are a legislative court. Go back and look at how they were structured, how they were set up. The district courts, they are a legislative court, people. Remember, all they do is handle debt collections. They are doing commerce. As long as they're doing commerce, then they are legislative because Congress regulates commerce. Anytime the government engages in commercial business, it abandons its sovereign capacity and shall be treated as any other ordinary corporation. That's all this is about. Again, here's the thing. There was a time when I got fed up. There had been so much violence around me. I watched 14 people die one year. I even watched a 14-year-old kid take his last breath in front of me because somebody shot him in the back. And I just so happened to be there. And I could not handle that. 14 people, but that one, his name was Ray Ray. Ray Ray was just a kid. Didn't bother nobody, didn't cause no trouble, wasn't a part of gang. He came home, did his homework, played basketball. That's all that kid did. And drive-by shooting, three shots, only three shots, and all three of them hit him. Ladies and gentlemen, the person who shot him, I knew. I didn't see the person shoot him. It's just a couple of weeks later, I ran into this person. I had been associated with him because his grandparents were Jehovah's Witnesses. So when he saw me, I told him where I lived, and then he decided to tell me what his friends and he had done that day. I had to keep my mouth shut. I didn't want to take off on him because I promise you I did. As much anger and hatred I had in me at that point, watching that young man die, which I'm grateful. I believe in the resurrection. That is my hope. That is what I believe in. That's why I move forward every day. Other than that, life wouldn't be worth living. Without the resurrection hope, without knowing that family members will be resurrected, what's the use? Hey, if we're all going to die and go to heaven, why aren't we all killing ourselves? Well, then you wouldn't go to heaven. Why not? God is all forgiven. So if I kill myself, then he has to forgive me because according to, pay attention, go read it if you want to. Romans, the seventh chapter, verse six. Death is the acquittal of sin. 
So once a person dies, everything they did, over with. That's why there is a caveat. If they're wicked, uh -uh, no acquittal. But for everything a person does, if they're not wicked, once they die, they've been acquitted. So if that is the case, why aren't we all killing ourselves if we all go to heaven? Interesting, ain't it? Especially since the Bible ain't never promised every good person goes to heaven and every bad person goes to some stupid hell that does not exist. Oh, yes, it does. Whatever. Go prove it. Revelation. Revelation is symbolic. So shut it up. Then you got to ask yourself, if there was a fiery hell, why in the hell would Jesus go to hell and burn? Why would his father torture him when he didn't commit a sin? Don't uh -uh, shut it up because you can't show me a single scripture that would say what you're about to say. There is no scripture that says Jesus was burning in nobody's hell. So you must understand what you believe. If you believe anything contrary, it is because somebody said it to you. And they said it to you over years and you saw it in television or some little stupid cartoon and you believe it. Look, people, notice how I always prove to you everything. I don't take nobody's word for it. So don't take my word for it. Go and do the research yourself. Prove to yourself everything that I'm saying. Prove to yourself everything you believe. Test out every inspired expression the scriptures tell us. Every one of them. But nobody does any testing. Test out what I'm saying. Go and test out what I told you about the courts, that they are a debt collection agency. Go read the Federal Debt Collection Procedures Act. Not the Practices Act, but the procedure. There's a procedure for how they do debt collection. Many of you are getting mad saying, and they took my house and they took my car and they took my wife and my kids and I don't know what, they, they, they are crooked, they're, they're wicked, these, these. And they're not. And I keep telling people they didn't do anything wrong. You just don't understand the procedure that they're doing. You're in Kansas and they are sitting all the way in Hawaii. And you're sitting up there trying to yell at them from Hawaii, I mean, from Kansas while they're in Hawaii and they can't hear you. But they are sitting up there sending you telegrams and messages from Hawaii talking about, hey, you need to get your butt over here. If you don't get over here, we're going we're gonna to hold you in default. And you'll be like yelling and screaming and hollering. But, oh, now you're speaking in Japanese and they are Korean. They can't understand you because you people don't know the language. You don't know the jurisdiction you're in, and you keep getting yourselves in trouble. So that's what a person like me is here for. I'm here to say, look, learn what jurisdiction you're in. Stop arguing with them. You are not right. You are wrong. You are bringing up all of these issues and challenges. and That's why they're saying you are sounding like you are deranged and crazy. because. Everything you're saying doesn't make sense because your arguments are the wrong argument for where you are. Don't you hear me, people? That's why I did that other video, and it was over an hour and 48 minutes long, so you guys can understand where you are, okay? That's what you need to understand. You need to understand the arena. You need to understand the jurisdiction. You need you need and somebody has to help you with what you need so don't take my word for it those of you who don't like the videos don't take my word for it those of you who can't stand the music don't take my word for it those of you who don't appreciate the antics ain't nobody else out there giving you this information go ahead take a look do your research go take a look at see if anybody else is talking about the things i'm talking about but give it a week or so then they're talking about it after I bring it up. I'm not patting myself on the back, people. I could care less about me regarding what I know because I only know what I know. What I will tell you is what I know from my experiences. As I tell you, I've been doing this law thing, going in the court since I was 15. That's right. I had a license at the age of 15 and a half. When you couldn't get it until you were 16, no, there were special um, special considerations for individuals who were 15, who was the sole male in the house, and there was no father. 
when my father had died when I was 15, I went and applied for my driver's license. I went in California driving school and went to, I actually eventually went to California driving school a second time, paid for it twice out of my own pocket. Why? Because I wanted to be good at driving. I didn't want to just be average. So I went to California driving school twice. I went to truck driver, diesel truck driving school, diesel. Uh, and I, when I say diesel, I'm not talking about the truck being diesel. I'm talking about also hauling diesel. I was a chemical hauler. I hauled chemicals. Wee! That was me. But I wanted to be the best. So when it came time for taking tests, I was out there in the vehicle, starting it up, practicing by myself while everybody else was going home. I'm still out there practicing while everybody else is home. I told you that's my routine. Just like this video, I'm still talking about all of this just so that you guys will understand who I am, not what I am, what I do. I'm the guy who, when they did the census and I was 16 years old and I was the supervisor for the census. And while all the adults are treating me as if I don't exist, as if I am nobody, as if they don't have to listen to me because I am younger than them, when they were going home, I did their work for them. I finished up the territory by myself, knocking on people's doors past 8 o'clock at night at 16 years old, doing the census. Go back, 1984 was the census. And I didn't report a single one. Now, you know what I do know? Each one of those adults who took advantage of that situation, nothing fared good for them for the rest of their lives because the way they did me is the way they would do everybody else. So that means they had nothing good coming their way. See, I take solace in that. That's what the scriptures mean by you reap what you sow. You see, your conduct, your, your attitude, <laughs> if you treat me that way, that means everybody else is going to treat you the same. In other words, you had it coming. Just, I'm just saying. Now, some people said that about me when they put me through all of that. Ladies and gentlemen, if I had it coming, let me explain to you. Then why did they release me? Why did they drop the charges? Why did the prosecution actually dismiss the charges saying that they were not going to prosecute again? Remember, they hated me so much. Why? Because this had nothing to do with them. I told you. My going in there had nothing to do. This was not their choice, although they wanted it to be their choice. Their releasing me was not their choice. I promise you that was not their choice. Just like PR, uh, sentencing me, convicting me, and releasing me on the same day after holding me for 22 months. The same amount of time as they held me there is the same amount of time as they held me here. 22 months. Now, what's so significant about that? Interesting, ain't it? Then the time after that, on the state level on PR was 15 months. Again, why do they keep doing it for so short a time? If they really wanted to get me, why didn't they do me like Tim Turner and the rest? Why didn't they give me years? Ladies and gentlemen, because they're not in control of this. Each time this has happened, I've known in advance it was going to happen, wrote it down for my benefit. So I'm playing off of that playbook. I'm playing off of those cards. I'm not playing off of anybody else's. Look, I'm sorry that some of you guys are going into court and the courts are sitting up there treating you as if you're stupid, as if you're supposed to know everything when it's obvious that you don't know anything. And it's okay not to know anything. Stop beating yourselves up because you don't know something. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can tell yourself all day long, but you should have known. But the fact is you don't know. So how can you get on yourself for something you don't know? Fine. It's your fault. Okay, acknowledge it. It's my fault and move on. Let it go. Why? Because, ladies and gentlemen, the court is not an arena that you can go in lightly. You have to know what you're doing. You have to know what you're doing. I told you, his name is Sam Davis. And let's see if I can show you this man because you guys are going to understand. I don't know which video it is that he does this. Uh, watch this. Hmm. 
No, I don't want Sam Davison. I want Sam Davis. I should have put A for B. Uh, let's do A for B. Let's do that. This is the young man right here. Now, a lot of people have said all kind of stupid things about Sam, but let me tell you, he talked about his friend, and I watched all of his videos back then. He talked about his friend going into court with a pad and a pen, and they call his name for a case, and he'd be like, okay, I'm here. Who's ready to contract? Uh, you ready to contract? The moment they say his name or say something, are you ready to contract? I'm ready to contract. Who's ready to contract? The next thing you know, the case will get dismissed. When he said that, I couldn't get that. I'm I'm saying like the rest of you. Man, I wish I knew what he knew so that I could do that. Ladies and gentlemen, it wasn't what he knew. It was what he understood. Now, there's a difference between knowing something and understanding something, which is why I tell you, I get understandings. You'll get it one day. But what he understood was everything is contract. When they call your name, they're making you an offer to speak up. So accept that offer. I conditionally accept your offer. Oh, I'll be that person if you want me to be. Only if you can prove you got jurisdiction over this man. Okay, go right ahead. I'm waiting for you to prove it. No, no, those are words. Words don't prove a thing. You know, sticks and stones type stuff. No, I need proof. I need to see proof. Oh, no, no, you can say whatever you want. Like I said, I accept your offer under the following conditions that you prove that you have jurisdiction. See, I could have been doing that back then if somebody just would have said it. Police pull you over. Hey, how you doing, officer? Oh, no, I accepted your offer under these conditions. <laughs> Here, here's my, uh, here's my counter offer. There you go. Oh, you see it says right to travel? So I know you're not interfering with my right to travel because I have a right to pursue happiness. And I was on my way to pursuing happiness and you interfered with me exercising my right. So since you wanted to exercise your authority, so to speak, there you are. Um, I'm ready to contract. Oh, you don't understand? Oh, that's okay. All right, I accept your offer. All right, now what, what else do you want to do? Since you accepted my offer, I accept your offer. Let's go. Uh, you want my ID? There you go. What else do you want? Okay, you're writing. Okay, go right ahead. Do whatever you're going to do. Okay, now you know you're breaching the contract, but it's okay. I understand. All right. Okay, now you need to supply me the information I demanded in that contract. All right, bye-bye. See you later. Oh, no, it's too late to opt out. You've already done all of this. You can't opt out of that contract. You've already performed under my contract. Oh, that's all right. The arbitrator is going to be getting in touch with you. Oh, no, I'm not here to argue with you. Oh, you can you can do whatever you want to do, officer. You're going to arrest me? You sure? Well, I'll tell you what. Before you do that, you go ahead and get your uh, sergeant out here. Nope. Uh -uh. You're not doing nothing until you get your sergeant out here. You know what the rules are. When I ask for a sergeant, you get a sergeant. Okay, thank you very much. Your recorder on? Got your recorder on? All right, that's good. No, I just wanted to make sure. Now, I'm going I'm to reach for my phone. See right there on the dash? You get my phone. The camera's already running. I just want you to know that I'm recording you. Oh, that's okay. You can get mad. Uh, Sergeant, that's who I need to speak with. All right. All right, you take care. Oh, no, 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 no. It's okay. I'll be right here. Okay. Um, And I, I, if I was you, I'd take good care of that, that agreement because, whew, man, that junk right there. You in a lot of trouble, man, because you're breaching my contract. You're still holding me here. So as long as you hold me here, hey, you're interfering with me exercising my constitutional right. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me I apologize to you because I misspoke there. The Constitution ain't gave nobody no rights, officer. So I, I don't have any constitutional rights. No, I have rights that are secured by the Constitution. See, my rights are unalienable rights. So the unalienable rights that I possess are natural rights, rights that I possess just for the sake of being. You don't get to interfere with those rights. Too many courts 
I can even take you to Redfield versus Fisher, where it says that I have those rights and there cannot be a penalty for the exercise of those rights, such as an excise. And you are now putting a tax on my right. So thank you. See, many of you couldn't have that conversation with such a person. Why? Because you would get angry. You would show emotion. I had a conversation with a gentleman yesterday, or two days ago, and it was involving something that was personal to him and how he had been done wrong regarding this personal thing that was done him. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I told him, I said, you can't let it be personal. That's, that's what I told him. I said it cannot be personal. The moment it becomes personal, you lose all objectivity. Now, he swore up and down it wasn't personal. Then you should have saw him get frustrated when I kept cutting him off, when I wouldn't let him finish his story. Yes, I do things like that. I apologize. And I do it on purpose. Because that's exactly what the court's going to do to you. And if you get upset, if you take exception when I do it, and I'm not a judge, at least not as so long as I'm not doing an arbitration, but I'm not a judge. And lo and behold, guess what happened, ladies and gentlemen? He got upset. Interesting, ain't it? Shame, shame, shame. So if you get upset with me, that means you will get upset with the idiot in the black robe. Look, my mother used to say when we come home and say, uh, mama, they did this, mama, they did this. I don't want to hear it. I mean, I'm telling you her words. I don't want to hear it. So I got to put that to sleep. You're like, but mama, I don't want to hear it. Look, you do the same at home. And so if you do it at home, you're going to do it at school. So I don't want to hear it. My parents were both that way. They knew us. They knew what we were capable of. Okay. So they said, if you do it at home, you're going to do it at school. Well, if that gentleman did that with me, that means he did that with them. That's all I was trying to see because everybody's an angel when they're talking to you. Nobody makes a mistake. Everybody's always the most politest, most nicest person on the planet. They don't yell. They don't argue. No, I didn't say anything wrong. No, I didn't tell him to shut up. No, I, I would never tell a judge to shut up. No, he just lied. No, the transcriber, they lied too. Oh, the audio recording? No, that must be a lie too. They must have doctored that somehow. These are the people that I talk to sometimes. Now, I'm not saying the guy who I spoke to two days ago, no, he wasn't saying that type of stuff. But I'm saying I spoke to people who, they didn't tell me the truth, but based in the middle, you know, along with the conversation, eventually I find out what the truth is, which is exactly what the truth was. Look, people, you can't hide certain things. So instead of focusing on whether or not you can hide the truth, why don't you focus on, hmm, when I go to court, the judge usually sits above everybody else. That's to intimidate the people below him, to make them think that this person is superior. That's why they put him up top. Then they put him in black because black is an intimidating color. That's why they refer to people who are persons of color as being black because they want them to always come across as being intimidating. I had a lady while I'm in a wheelchair tell me that I was threatening her. How was I threatening her? Because I was gesturing with my hands that I was threatening her. She felt afraid because I was gesturing with my hands. So I accused her of her stupid racism. Uh, what? She didn't say nothing racist to you, did she? Oh, yes, she did. The moment she said I was threatening her when all I was doing was sitting in a stupid wheelchair, then that means that she was using that racist thing where white women, sorry, my Caucasian females, women, ladies, white women were often accusing black men, especially black men with size, of being threatening, of rape, of damaging them. 
you don't believe me, go back and look at the history. Look at Emmett Till. Emmett Till. If you don't know who Emmett Till is, shame on you. Okay? Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. This video wasn't supposed to be this long. But it's one of those videos where people get to hear. As I said, I'm also sorry that some of you guys are going through what you're going through in court. So to get through court, I'll say it again. You have to realize where you're at. You're in somebody else's house. Read the signs. Yes, you can read sign language. Read the signs before you enter that house. Go over their procedures. It's right there in those stupid rules. Go over their procedures so that you know what's going on. If your case is at, the, uh, what is it, one thirty, then show up at 9 o'clock. If your case is at 9.30, show up at 8.30. Or show up the day before if it's a business day. And go in there and listen and see how that court operates. Go and sit in the audience and listen. I promise you that's what I did. Can you imagine a 16-year-old kid going into court and just sitting there with his pen and paper? Yes, I walked in with a pad and paper, but I wasn't doing what Sam Davis was saying. But I walked in there with a pad and a paper and I was taking notes. Did it at the age of 17, did it at the age of 18, did it at the age of 19. Just going into court, listening to the arguments, listening to what people were doing, and then mimicking it, making it my own. You guys can do the same. Now, look, I talked about yawning earlier because of being tired. It is a long day for me. Uh, like I said, my biggest thing was getting the mail out, the emails, and I got those finished. So I uh, responded to after, because many of them were duplicates. So instead of it being 400 emails, many of them were duplicate emails. It was only 200. So, yes, I sat up there and took care of 200 emails all with one stroke of the pen by using a simple app that allowed me to do that. Okay, so I am grateful that I was able to do that because that was my biggest concern is not responding. Now, even though it was a general response, it all referenced and gave them information that might be answers to their questions. And if they have questions beyond that, they're given a way to contact us. Ladies and gentlemen, I will say this before I get off of this uh, device. Uh, those of you who have been donating, thank you. And those of you who would like to, the donation link is under the video. The first one, Buy You Now. Buy You Now is the donation link. There you can put in whatever amount you'd like. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, thank you for letting me take this time I'm about to yawn again because I'm that tired. <laughs> and I really do want to yawn, but I want to get through this before I uh, start yawning and you start hearing me yawn. Like I said, it's been a long day. The emails I've been working on all day for hours, yesterday, hours the day before, because there was no simple information as to how to do the videos. I had to discover it. And so a lot of research, just searching for that. But now it's done. I know how to do it. Now I can teach the next person. I probably will do a video that will be a lot more simpler than the video these guys did because they didn't tell me how to take emails from Google and group them together and put them all in one email without having to do each one step by step. There, it's a simple process, and I probably will do a video just like I tell people how to unlock PDFs, how simple that process is. See, about to yawn again. So let me say goodnight to everybody. Thank you all very much. And thank you for appreciating the music and appreciating the antics and appreciating the person and appreciating the information and appreciating the knowledge. And thank you again for your contributions. Have a good day. Have a good life. Have a good night. Have a good time. This is Saturday evening. It's time for me to go to sleep. I hope y'all get to go to sleep too. Good night, people. Good day. Good morning. Good afternoon. Adios.